In June 2019, the small rural town of Elmore, Iowa, stood quietly amidst vast expanses of cornfields that stretched as far as the eye could see. This idyllic setting was home to Mason Carter, a 35-year-old mechanic, and his wife, Layla, who worked as a nurse at the community clinic. The couple lived in a modest house on the edge of a large corn farm, a place that reflected the simplicity and routine of their daily lives. To the outside world, Mason and Layla appeared to be an ordinary couple leading a quiet, uneventful existence. However, beneath the surface, their marriage was marked by a silent, growing tension. Mason, known in the town for his skill at the local auto shop, kept to himself, his reserved nature masking a deeper internal struggle. Layla, on the other hand, was well regarded at the clinic, known for her dedication and warmth in caring for her patients. Yet, despite their professional successes, their home life was overshadowed by an unspoken pain. Mason had been diagnosed with infertility, a fact that had become a source of deep personal shame for him. This condition was a secret they guarded closely, known only to a few, and it cast a long shadow over their relationship. Layla's desire to have children had grown stronger with each passing year, and the absence of a family weighed heavily on her. She longed for the fulfillment of motherhood, a dream that seemed increasingly out of reach. Mason, although supportive, was tormented by his inability to give her the one thing she wanted most. This unfulfilled desire created a subtle yet persistent strain in their marriage, one that was felt in every aspect of their lives. Their daily interactions were cordial, but lacked the warmth they once shared. Conversations over dinner were brief and often tinged with a sense of disappointment. Despite their efforts to maintain a sense of normalcy, the unspoken tension between them was palpable. The couple remained active in their community, attending local events and church services, but there was a growing distance in their private moments. Their once close-knit bond had begun to fray under the weight of their unspoken pain. As the days of June passed, the cornfields around their home flourished, a stark contrast to the withering connection between Mason and Layla. The peaceful setting of Elmore, with its quiet streets and friendly neighbors, belied the storm that was brewing behind the closed doors of the Carter household. What seemed like a tranquil, uneventful life to outsiders was, in reality, a life teetering on the edge of a precipice. In early July 2019, the quiet town of Elmore, Iowa, was thrust into a state of unease when Layla Carter, a well-known nurse at the local clinic, suddenly vanished. It was a warm evening, and Layla had just finished her shift, as she did every weekday. She said her goodbyes to her colleagues and left the clinic around 7 p.m., heading towards the staff parking lot. Her red 2011 Honda Civic, a familiar sight in town, pulled out onto the main road, and that was the last anyone saw of her. When Layla didn't return home that night, Mason Carter, her husband, didn't immediately panic. He assumed she had gone to visit a friend or needed some time alone after their argument earlier that evening. Their quarrels had become more frequent recently, often fueled by the underlying tension in their marriage. But when the night stretched on with no word from Layla, Mason's concern grew into alarm. By morning, his worry had turned to fear. Layla wasn't answering her phone, and there were no signs of her at any of the places she might have gone. By 7.30 a.m. the next day, Mason walked into the Elmore Police Department, visibly distressed. His voice trembled as he explained to the officer on duty that his wife hadn't come home. He detailed their argument the previous night, admitting that it had been a heated one. Layla, upset, had stormed out of the house, gotten into her car, and driven off. Mason claimed he thought she just needed space, but now he was worried something had happened to her. The local police, familiar with the Carters, took Mason's report seriously. Layla was well-liked in the community, and her sudden disappearance set off immediate alarms. An officer was dispatched to the Carter home to gather more information while a bulletin was issued to look out for Layla's red Honda Civic. Initial efforts focused on tracing her last known movements, starting with the clinic and her drive home. The town, small and tightly knit, quickly became abuzz with rumors and concern. 
Layla's co-workers were shocked. They described her as dedicated, reliable, and happy, though they mentioned that she had seemed more stressed in recent weeks. By midday, the case had escalated. Local media picked up the story, and within hours, Layla's face was plastered across television screens, social media feeds, and local newspapers. Mason, now the face of the grieving husband, made a tearful plea during a hastily organized press conference. Standing in front of the police station, with cameras flashing and reporters thrusting microphones in his face, Mason's voice cracked as he begged for Layla's safe return. He admitted they had argued but emphasized how much he loved her and needed her to come back. Layla, if you're out there, please, just come home. I'm sorry. I just want you back, he implored, his eyes wet with tears. The press conference was emotionally charged, and many in the town felt deep sympathy for Mason. His visible anguish struck a chord, and the community quickly rallied around him. Volunteers gathered to organize search parties, combing through the dense cornfields, nearby woods, and every back road that Layla might have taken. The local sheriff's office coordinated the search efforts, deploying officers to cover more ground and setting up checkpoints in case Layla's car was still in the area. Despite these efforts, there was no sign of Layla or her vehicle. As the hours turned into days, the absence of any leads began to weigh heavily on the investigation. The police interviewed friends, family, and co-workers, piecing together Layla's last known activities and trying to establish a motive for her disappearance. They searched the Carter home, looking for any clues that might indicate where she had gone. Mason cooperated fully, allowing them access to everything, from their home computers to their personal diaries. He was forthcoming about their marital issues, acknowledging that they had been under strain but insisting that they were working through it. Despite Mason's cooperative demeanor, a sense of unease began to settle in among the investigators. While his public displays of emotion were convincing, there were small inconsistencies in his statements that they couldn't ignore. He seemed genuinely devastated, yet something felt off. His recounting of the events leading up to Layla's disappearance was detailed, almost too detailed as if he had rehearsed it. There were also subtle shifts in his behavior during questioning, moments where his composure faltered in ways that didn't seem entirely natural. The police noted these discrepancies, but kept their suspicions quiet, not wanting to jump to conclusions without evidence. The townspeople, however, were less restrained. As days passed without any progress in the search, whispers began to circulate. Some wondered if Layla had left of her own accord, seeking to escape a life that had become too stifling. Others speculated more darkly, questioning whether Mason's grief was as genuine as it appeared. The fact that there were no signs of a struggle, no reports of suspicious activity around the time she vanished, and no trace of her car all fueled these speculations. People who had initially rallied around Mason now began to keep their distance, their support tempered by growing doubt. In the midst of this, the police continued to probe deeper into the Carters' lives. They looked into Mason's background, his work history, and his relationships with others in town. They also revisited the clinic where Layla worked, speaking to her colleagues about her state of mind in the days leading up to her disappearance. Some mentioned that she had seemed preoccupied, distracted even, but there was nothing that stood out as a red flag. One co-worker did recall a conversation where Layla had mentioned feeling trapped, though she didn't elaborate. This, coupled with the growing tension in the Carter's marriage, led investigators to consider whether Layla might have simply walked away from her life. As these theories circulated, the search for Layla continued, though with less fervor than in the initial days. The cornfields were scoured repeatedly, helicopters were brought in to survey the area from above, and dive teams searched nearby bodies of water. But despite these extensive efforts, there were no new leads, no sightings, and no developments. Layla Carter had seemingly vanished into thin air. Mason's behavior during this time remained under scrutiny. He continued to make public appeals, each one more desperate than the last, but his actions behind the scenes were closely watched by the police. 
They monitored his phone calls, tracked his movements, and quietly kept tabs on his interactions with others. Every word he said, every tear he shed, was weighed against the growing suspicion that he might know more than he was letting on. The community, once united in their search for Layla, now found itself divided, with some still believing in Mason's innocence and others beginning to suspect foul play. In the absence of concrete evidence, the investigation began to stall. The police were under pressure to deliver results, but without a body, a crime scene, or any definitive proof of wrongdoing, they were left with little more than speculation. Mason's life had become a fishbowl, with every aspect of his existence under the microscope. The strain was evident in his increasingly haggard appearance and the exhaustion that seemed to weigh him down. Yet he persisted in his efforts to find Layla, clinging to the hope that she might still be out there somewhere. The story of Mason and Layla Carter began in their college years, a time marked by youthful optimism and the excitement of new beginnings. They had met during their sophomore year at a local community college in Iowa, where their shared interests in music and literature quickly forged a deep connection. Their relationship blossomed, and as graduation approached, they decided to marry. The wedding took place in a picturesque cornfield, a modest but charming ceremony attended by close friends and family, capturing the essence of rural simplicity and love. Following their wedding, Mason and Layla moved into Mason's childhood home with his parents, Robert and Ellen Carter. The Carter's house, situated on the outskirts of town, was a classic farmhouse surrounded by expansive cornfields, emblematic of the region's agricultural heartland. Robert, a charismatic yet overbearing figure, was a retired high school teacher known for his strong presence and authoritative demeanor. Ellen, his wife, was a kind-hearted woman who preferred to stay in the background, often overshadowed by Robert's dominating personality. Initially, Mason and Layla adjusted to their new life with the Carters without significant issues. The arrangement seemed practical, offering them financial stability while they established their careers. Mason worked as a mechanic, and Layla found employment as a nurse at the local clinic. Their days were filled with routine, but beneath the surface, a subtle tension began to build. It was Robert's increasing interest in Layla that set the stage for the turmoil to come. At first, his behavior was masked by apparent friendliness, marked by excessive compliments and lingering glances. His advances, while subtle at first, grew progressively more intrusive. He would make unsolicited comments about Layla's appearance and frequently seek her out for private conversations, often finding excuses to be alone with her. Despite her initial resistance and discomfort, Layla found herself increasingly isolated, unable to fully confide in Mason about the nature of Robert's attention. The situation escalated when Robert's attention became more overt. He began to make unwelcome physical gestures, such as touching Layla's arm or leaning in too close during conversations. Layla, caught in a cycle of confusion and emotional distress, felt trapped in a precarious situation. Her attempts to distance herself from Robert were met with increased aggression and persistence. Robert's manipulation played on Layla's feelings of isolation and helplessness. His charisma and authoritative stance made it difficult for her to confront him directly or seek support from others. In time, the boundaries that Layla had tried to maintain began to erode. Robert's persistent harassment eventually led to a series of sexual encounters. Layla, overwhelmed by a mix of fear, coercion, and a desperate need for emotional validation, succumbed to his advances. The encounters, while initially a means of escape from the mounting pressure, soon became a source of deep-seated guilt and shame for Layla. She understood that this situation was untenable, and felt trapped in a web of deceit and betrayal. Realizing she could not continue under such circumstances, Layla decided to end the relationship with Robert. Her decision to move out of the Carter home and into a place of their own with Mason was an attempt to reclaim her autonomy and distance herself from the toxic environment. Mason, despite being supportive, remained unaware of the full extent of the conflict between his wife and his father. 
Their new home, a modest house a few miles away, offered them a fresh start, but the underlying issues were far from resolved. Years after Mason and Layla Carter had settled into their new house, the initial relief of moving away from Mason's parents seemed short-lived. The discovery of Mason's infertility, revealed a few years into their marriage, cast a long shadow over their relationship. The realization that Mason could not father children was a significant blow to both partners, heightening their emotional strain and straining their bond. In the aftermath of this revelation, Layla's emotional distress became increasingly palpable. Her desire for children, which had always been a source of tension, was now intensified by the realization that Mason could not provide the family she had envisioned. The couple's interactions grew more strained, marked by arguments and unspoken resentment. The shared dream of starting a family seemed to crumble, and their once stable relationship began to unravel. Layla's frustration and emotional turmoil led her to seek solace elsewhere, and she began visiting Mason's parents more frequently. These visits were ostensibly to maintain family connections and support Ellen, who was often left alone while Robert was away on business. However, the underlying reasons for these visits were more complex. With Robert frequently absent, Layla found herself alone with him more often, and his previous predatory behavior began to resurface. Robert, seizing the opportunity presented by Ellen's absence, renewed his advances toward Layla. His charm, combined with a sense of unchecked authority, proved difficult for Layla to resist. The emotional isolation she felt from Mason and the ongoing stress of their situation made her vulnerable to Robert's manipulations. Despite her initial resistance and the painful memories of their previous encounters, Layla found herself drawn back into an illicit relationship with Robert. As the affair rekindled, the situation grew more complicated. Layla's visits to Mason's parents became a cover for their renewed interactions. The secrecy of their encounters and the pattern of deceit further complicated Layla's emotional state. The affair, hidden from Mason, became a source of both relief and guilt for Layla. Detective Laura Hughes, known for her astute investigative skills, took charge of the high-profile case surrounding Layla Carter's disappearance. As the investigation unfolded, Hughes and her team faced the daunting task of untangling the web of potential suspects and leads. The disappearance of Layla had become a focal point of concern in the small town of Elmore, attracting both local and media scrutiny. Mason Carter, Layla's husband, was a central figure in the investigation. His emotional distress following Layla's disappearance was palpable, and his proximity to the events made him a person of interest. Hughes and her team conducted a thorough examination of Mason's activities and statements. Mason described an argument with Layla on the night she vanished, recounting how she left their home in her red 2011 Honda Civic. His account was consistent, but his emotional outbursts at the press conference and his apparent desperation to find his wife raised questions about whether his distress was entirely genuine or if it masked a deeper involvement. Robert Carter, Mason's father, was another significant suspect. His strained relationship with Layla had been noted, and Hughes explored his background in detail. Although Robert was not present in Elmore at the time of Layla's disappearance, his previous interactions with Layla and his general behavior were under scrutiny. The investigation reviewed Robert's whereabouts and examined any connections he might have had with the case. His sporadic presence at home, combined with his prior involvement with Layla, made him a key figure in the unfolding mystery. In addition to Mason and Robert, the investigative team considered several of Layla's acquaintances. These individuals, who had varying degrees of interaction with her, were interviewed to uncover any possible motives or insights. Friends and colleagues from the clinic provided information about Layla's state of mind and her interactions in the days leading up to her disappearance. Some acquaintances noted Layla's frustrations with her personal and professional life, but none offered clear motives for harm. The investigation focused heavily on gathering and analyzing evidence from various sources. Surveillance footage from the clinic where Layla worked was reviewed meticulously. 
The footage captured Layla leaving her shift on the evening she disappeared, entering her vehicle, and driving away. However, the absence of footage showing her arrival at home or any unusual activity around her vehicle that night posed challenges for the investigation. Witness interviews and suspect interrogations were conducted rigorously, but the evidence remained circumstantial. No definitive link was established between any suspect and Layla's disappearance, and each lead seemed to generate more questions rather than providing clear answers. The lack of physical evidence connecting the suspects to the crime complicated the investigation further. Detective Hughes and her team faced increasing pressure to resolve the case. The intricate nature of the investigation highlighted the difficulties involved in piecing together Layla's final moments and determining the true nature of her disappearance. As the investigation progressed, the narrative centered on the detective's efforts to clarify the situation, scrutinizing each suspect's alibi and motive while piecing together the fragmented evidence. In mid-September 2019, the Elmore Police Department received a critical tip from a hospital employee where Layla Carter had worked. The anonymous caller revealed that Layla was two months pregnant on the day she vanished. This shocking development sent waves through the investigation as it added a crucial new element to the case. Detective Laura Hughes wasted no time in informing Mason Carter of the new information. Mason, who had been grappling with the emotional turmoil of his wife's disappearance, was stunned by the revelation. His response was one of intense distress and denial, as he insisted that Layla's pregnancy could not be possible due to his infertility. Mason's vehement denial introduced a new layer of complexity to the case, further straining his already fragile emotional state. The police quickly recognized the significance of the pregnancy revelation. Identifying the father of Layla's child became a central focus of the investigation. This new lead pointed to someone in Layla's life who had not yet been thoroughly examined, prompting investigators to revisit and scrutinize their list of potential suspects. As the investigation intensified, attention turned to Robert Carter, Mason's father. Robert had previously been a person of interest due to his complex relationship with Layla. Following the anonymous tip, the police obtained a search warrant for Robert's residence. During the search, they uncovered hidden cameras placed throughout Robert's home. The cameras had recorded various private and compromising moments involving Layla, revealing an unsettling pattern of invasive behavior. Faced with this evidence, Robert Carter eventually confessed to the police that he had indeed been romantically involved with Layla. His admission added a significant twist to the investigation, confirming that the affair was real and that he had been engaged in a covert relationship with his daughter-in-law. Despite this revelation, Robert adamantly denied any involvement in Layla's disappearance. He claimed that, while he had engaged in an affair with her, he had no knowledge of her whereabouts or any role in her vanishing. Robert's confession, combined with the evidence of his hidden surveillance, painted a disturbing picture of his conduct. The recordings captured his obsessive behavior and revealed a clear breach of privacy, highlighting his manipulative and invasive nature. However, Robert's insistence on his innocence regarding Layla's disappearance presented a challenge for the police. They had substantial evidence of his inappropriate behavior, but linking this directly to the disappearance remained elusive. The investigation now faced a critical juncture. While Robert's confession and the incriminating footage bolstered suspicions against him, the direct connection to Layla's disappearance was still not firmly established. The police needed to untangle the web of deceit and figure out how Robert's involvement with Layla and the pregnancy might fit into the broader puzzle of her disappearance. On October 5th, 2019, Layla's red Honda Civic was discovered abandoned in the parking lot of a shopping center in the neighboring town of Marshalltown, about 40 miles from Elmore. The local police were the first to find the car, which was oddly left with the keys still in the ignition, but no sign of Layla. Crime scene investigators were called in to examine the vehicle, meticulously collecting samples and dusting for fingerprints. The car's interior was thoroughly searched for any clues that might indicate what had happened to Layla. 
When Mason was informed about the discovery of the car, his reaction raised eyebrows. He appeared unusually anxious, a stark contrast to his earlier composed demeanor. Soon after, a witness came forward, claiming he had given a ride to a man late one night from Marshalltown to Elmore. The man had flagged him down near the shopping center where Layla's car was found, explaining that his own car had broken down and he needed to get home urgently because his wife was pregnant. The witness described the man as being in a disheveled state, his clothes smeared with dirt, which seemed odd but not immediately alarming at the time. The description given by the witness, however, closely matched Mason Carter. Detective Laura Hughes and her team began connecting the dots. Surveillance footage from the shopping center in Marshalltown was reviewed, and it didn't take long before Mason's image was captured on camera, appearing on the night in question, exiting Layla's car and leaving the area. This discovery significantly intensified the focus on Mason as a suspect. With mounting suspicion, a search warrant was obtained for Mason's home. During the search, police discovered a set of dirty clothes hidden in the basement behind the boiler room. The clothes were caked with dirt, and they were immediately sent for forensic examination. Meanwhile, Layla's car was further scrutinized. Investigators noted dirt caked on the wheels and found a blood-stained rug in the trunk. DNA tests quickly confirmed that the blood in the trunk belonged to Layla, and the dirt on both Mason's hidden clothes and the car's wheels matched samples taken from the remote areas of the cornfield near Mason's home. With this damning evidence in hand, Mason was brought in for questioning. As the interrogation progressed, the pressure on Mason increased, and his previously calm facade began to crack. Detective Hughes laid out the evidence methodically, each piece connecting Mason to Layla's disappearance. Finally, Overwhelmed by the mounting proof and the relentless questioning, Mason broke down and confessed. Mason admitted that he had discovered Layla's affair with his father, Robert, and learned about her pregnancy. Consumed by rage and the sense of betrayal, Mason confronted Layla during a heated argument. In a fit of uncontrollable anger, he attacked her, beating and strangling her in their bedroom. After realizing what he had done, Mason panicked. He wrapped Layla's body in a sheet, carried her to the trunk of her own car, and drove to a secluded area in the cornfield where he buried her. After disposing of Layla's body, Mason drove her car to Marshalltown and left it in the parking lot to divert attention away from himself. He then hitchhiked back to Elmore, carefully covering up any traces of his crime upon returning home. However, despite his efforts to erase the evidence, the investigation had unraveled his meticulous plan. Mason's confession led the police to the exact location in the cornfield where Layla's body was buried. Her remains were exhumed, confirming the grim reality of what had transpired. Mason was immediately arrested, and the case against him solidified. The shocking details of the crime and the revelation of the affair between Layla and Robert shook the community to its core, turning the case into a media sensation. In the aftermath of Mason Carter's arrest, the town of Elmore was thrust into a state of collective shock and mourning. The once quiet community, known for its close-knit nature and rural tranquility, now found itself at the center of a tragic story that would haunt it for years. The arrest had not only shattered the lives of those directly involved, but also left deep emotional scars on the residents who had once considered Mason and Layla part of their extended family. The revelation of Layla's murder and Mason's confession sent ripples of disbelief and sorrow through the town as people struggled to reconcile the man they knew with the horrifying acts he had committed. Layla's funeral was held in late November, a somber event that drew a large turnout from the community. Friends, family, and acquaintances gathered to pay their respects to a woman who had been admired for her kindness and dedication to her work at the clinic. The service was marked by a palpable sense of loss, not just for Layla, but for the future she had been robbed of. Her colleagues from the clinic, patients she had cared for, and members of the community who had known her all came to mourn the untimely end of a life that had touched so many. As the town grieved, Mason's legal battle began to take shape. 
The case quickly gained media attention, not only for the shocking nature of the crime, but also for the legal complexities it involved. Mason was charged with first-degree murder for Layla's death, a charge that carried the possibility of life imprisonment without parole under Iowa law. Additionally, Mason faced charges related to the death of Layla's unborn child, classified as first-degree feticide. This charge, under Iowa Code, Chapter 707, recognized the unlawful termination of the pregnancy as a separate offense, reflecting the state's legal stance on the protection of unborn children. The dual charges underscored the gravity of the case, as prosecutors prepared to argue that Mason's actions had ended two lives, not just one. The trial commenced in early January 2020, with Mason opting to represent himself in court, a decision that added another layer of complexity to the proceedings. The choice to pursue pro se litigation, defending oneself without a lawyer, was met with skepticism by legal experts and observers. Despite Mason's mechanical background and intelligence, the courtroom was an entirely different arena, one where emotions ran high and legal technicalities could easily trip up even the most prepared defendant. The prosecution, led by a seasoned district attorney, presented a case that was bolstered by the overwhelming physical evidence and Mason's own confession. Over the course of the trial, the courtroom became a focal point for both the local and national media. Each day, reporters and spectators filled the seats, eager to witness the unfolding drama. The prosecution methodically laid out the evidence, including the surveillance footage, the blood found in the trunk of Layla's car, and the hidden clothes in Mason's basement. They argued that Mason's actions were premeditated, driven by a combination of jealousy, rage, and a desire to cover up the affair Layla had with his father, Robert. The defense, hampered by Mason's inexperience, struggled to counter the prosecution's narrative, often stumbling over procedural issues and legal arguments. As the trial progressed, the emotional toll on those involved became increasingly apparent. Layla's family, who had remained mostly out of the public eye, attended the trial in quiet dignity, their grief visible but unspoken. Robert Carter, Mason's father, who had been exposed as having an affair with Layla, also made appearances in court, his presence a stark reminder of the tangled web of betrayal that had led to the tragedy. The community watched as the once-respected Carter family was torn apart by the revelations, their lives now irrevocably linked to the crime. The trial concluded in mid-February, with the jury deliberating for only a few hours before returning a verdict of guilty on all charges. Mason was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole for the murder of Layla, with an additional sentence for the feticide charge. The courtroom was silent as the verdict was read, the weight of the decision hanging heavily in the air. Mason, who had remained stoic throughout much of the trial, showed little emotion as the sentence was handed down, his fate now sealed by the very system he had chosen to navigate on his own. For many in Elmore, the events of 2019 and early 2020 served as a harsh reminder of the unseen struggles and hidden secrets that could lurk beneath the surface of even the most seemingly ordinary lives. The case had forced the town to confront uncomfortable truths about the people they thought they knew and the depths of human despair and cruelty. As winter turned to spring, the town slowly began to move forward, but the memory of Layla's life and death and the consequences of Mason's actions would remain etched in the collective consciousness of Elmore for years to come.